this is Greg Skufka and Bill Vale from the Tactical Whitetail University in Michigan, www.pressuredeerpro1word.com. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going out in the woods and we're going to do a stand setup on a location that, that, that we've been doing habitat development for three years. What's, in, what's cool about that is we target bucks after the habitat has been developed by going in, finding the correct sign, and then setting up the ambush spots. What we're going to show you today is a location where I actually did two bedding habitats. They're different kinds of bedding habitats, food plot in the center, with terrain understanding about how the deer will eventually use it. For example, scent checking downwind of the food plot. And so we've been watching this area now for three years and it's now gotten to the point of development where I've got a buck bedding in two locations. We're going to show you both the beds, both the locations that I made, and we're going to show you how we're going to ambush this buck. Now this kind of stuff is really uh, going to help you learn how to develop your property and do setups that are similar. We really hope you'll uh, join our membership because we teach this stuff on our membership, on our webpage, and also consider coming to our school here because we really teach you leading edge techniques that'll make a world of this difference in you being able to harvest mature whitetails. This is Greg again from Pressure Deer Pros, www.pressuredeerpro.com. Uh, basically, I showed you guys a video post boosted it on Facebook just a bit ago of this line of licking trees that I put in. These are communal licking branches that deer, deer will use all year. And these have been in now for about oh, 10 days. And look how they've hit every one of these already. They'll, they'll use these all summer. And come fall, there'll be scrapes under here. We got a kill. Greg, I don't know how well they can see that. Grab that branch and hold it right there in, in, in front of that. There we go. Every one of these are like that down through here. So anyway, there'll be scrapes under here and we've got a kill, a killer stand location across this food plot behind us, clover food plot. And I'm gonna kill a buck, or one of my buddies is, off of this stand location. These licking branches are key. If you aren't doing a lot of licking branch work on your property, I'm talking, I target 100 licking branch setups per 100 acres. If you do that, you keep your bucks really busy. You'll have scrapes everywhere and uh, you'll have greater success. have diverse habitat on your property to hold more bucks, you got to have some of this. This is Greg at Pressure Deer Pro. Do you have diverse habitat like this in your property? You really need to and it needs to be in the right place. Do you have diverse habitat on your property like this berm. What is this here for? In two years, it'll have grass this tall on it. And there'll be a ton of deer bedding on it. Do you have this kind of habitat? What about that? Do you have diverse habitat on your property? You need to, and it needs to be placed strategically for Pressure Deer Pro, www.pressuredeerpro1word.com. So, talking about habitat a little bit today, uh, habitat specialist for the group, and we talk about having enough food for all four seasons. So there's lots of reasons to come in and have diverse habitat like I've talked about, but one of the reasons I haven't mentioned much about is food source during the winter. You know, it's 
April 19th in Michigan and we still have snow. That's just crazy. What are the deer gonna eat? There's no green up yet. Well, just look right here. Look at this. This is an old maple tree that was cut and harvested when I did some timbering in here. And look at it. There's not a twig that hasn't been eaten down three, four inches. So when you think about trying to hold more deer on your property and more older bucks and keeping them there so that you can wait till they get to the age, you got to have enough food to hold them during the winter as well. Here's a case of that. It's Greg from Pressure Deer Pro. Hello, this is Greg Skufka and Bill Vale. We're out here in the woods today. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to show you how we develop a piece of property and how ultimately by plan design we then wait until the appropriate time to target a buck. So this video is going to be fairly lengthy. There may be more than one segment we're doing out in the field and hopefully you will learn a lot. And after you've gone through this, we really like you to consider coming to our school, Tactical Whitetail University in Michigan. It's going to be worth your time because we're going to teach you things to really help you be more successful about ambush and how to develop your property and hold more bucks. So this parcel we're on is only 40 acres. So what we got here is a ridge line with a ravine, a bigger ravine, and we got a main creek that comes up. And this is a flat up here, and this is north. So three years ago, I started developing this. And the first thing I did is I developed a bedding area right over in this area right here. I did it for a reason. It's a safety area. They're protected. You can't get to them very easily. A buck's going to want to bed there. I couldn't get a logger in here, so I did it by hand. I probably cut 100 18-inch popple trees down. And we're going to go in and show you I got a specific bed area that's being used by a target buck. And we're going to show you why in a moment. The second thing I did is I developed another bedding area up here. This particular one is a hinge cut. Small, designed tactically for focusing on mature buck holding only. Not for does. Does bed all over the place. All right, the next thing we did, I did in the plan, is that I need some food. Something to draw the deer back and forth. And why did I do it here? Because strategically, I've got a pinch point that occurs right here. There is a field, big, big farm field edge right here. I didn't draw on here, but this is field edge. All right. The next thing is I did is right out here, I put a one acre clover food plot in. And I divided it with switchgrass for a reason. So there's a food plot. That's the draw. Now what has happened is it's now I got another bed right here. We're going to show you that bed location as well. The buck's using both of these beds. Now it took three years for this all to develop. When you do some habitat changes like this, it's not going to like an hour later it's working for you. You got to have patience. It takes a year or two. Basically, you're going to have around this because a deer can't traverse this. You're going to have a, a runway around that. So what has developed is a runway that ties into this bedding area, comes along this edge, and goes into this bedding area. So what we're going to do now is, is so once this is developed, and, and I need to add this as well, this runway also goes like this, like this, and so on and so forth. So now what, we, so, so how did we determine if this spot was ready to be set up for ambush? How do we know there's bucks here? Well, number one, we're going to show you in a minute, when you find bushes destroyed, that means you got a big buck in here. When you find big rubs, like we have along here only, you know you got a, a good buck going here. So right now what we're going to do is Bill's going to take over a second and he's going to show you one of those rubs and talk about it because it's got rubs on both sides and why that's important to us. And the next thing we're going to do after we kind of regroup for a second is I'm going to, we're going to go, we're going to take you, show you this pinch point here. We're going to show you these beds and go into these uh, uh, habitat areas I developed. Well, if you'll notice this runway right here, but I'm not seeing the runway. I'm seeing this right here. 
but we've got six or eight of these down through here and I, I know you can't see it real good and I've got other pictures you come around here you can see it real good this deer is leaving a check mark and all of the maple trees in a row down this run going both ways right here have got we got seven or eight of these just like this all in a run that means that because of Craig's outstanding habitat work the bucks have chose this narrow location to sneak back and forth to scent check their bed and to also to set, check the food plot for does when they pass through here. Timing here is a piece of cake. Why? This tree tells me what time to be here. It's rubbed on both sides, morning or evening. This is a beautiful all-day spot. This spot hunted during the new moon, periods of time discussed on my calendar, or this year during the full moon and perigee, we'll have a midday opportunity as well. Now let's follow this run down. Let's show you how we're making sure all the deer come to us. As you can see, we have a well-used runway right here. You know, it's coming through. And it was going straight through here, missing our ambush tree. Well, we took some brush down and we cut some trees down in here and we blocked this run. And now if you look, you'll see, they're coming right to us. It enhanced this thing big time. It makes it more of a concentration point. Why do we look for concentration points? Where the deer are concentrated, so will the big dominant buck be. Now, other sign of dominant bucks. I think a lot of guys see this stuff, and I don't think it really registers with them what they're seeing. But you can see that this bush here has been annihilated. This is older than some of this stuff. Some of these breaks are different ages. That's how you tell us by looking at it. And the uh, uh, snapped off and broken down stuff to bust off a branch like that when it's green for a buck he's got to have long times to get in there I, I'm in more impressed with stuff like this than I am the big jumbo hits but this is just another sign that that big buck's been staging here and ripping up bushes before he visits the food plot you've got a good one okay this is Bill Vale from Pressure Deer Pro and we're going to take a short time out and we're going to walk to the two nearby bedding areas here and we're going to show you where these deer are bedding then we're going to show you the ambush spot and how we're setting it up for the wind and how we're going to shoot this buck next year by plan design that's right no chance to it this spot was developed we found the sign after it was developed we're moving in on the sign this buck doesn't even know we're here doesn't have a clue what's going on he's never been hunted for and he'll probably be killed the very first time he is this is Bill Vale from Pressure Deer Pro have a great day hello this is Greg from Pressure Deer Pro we're gonna to head to the bedding areas now we're gonna to go to the one in the south where the big popple trees have been clear-cut we're following the runway and you'll see the ravine pinpoint right here and you can see all the run they come down to this point and lead right to our ambush spot. Now I do have to say this real quick. This is a deer bed. Why is it here? It's a sun bed. They can get sun in the south. And that's why they got the overhead canopy to protect them. Look at the hair in here. I can see all kinds of them. Tons of them. So this is a deer bed right down to the dirt. Good job, Greg. Yep. All right, keep Good going. Eye. On the other side of this pine tree is a wild apple tree. I did a segment on wild apple trees and why you want to stay on top of them so they generate our apples for you. Make sure you join our member area and see that video. So look at this habitat that I've created here. This is done by just dropping huge popple trees 
What's interesting is if you get super, super mature popple trees, they actually don't regenerate as well as mid-aged ones. I'm not really sure why that is, but there's still great regeneration in here. You can see the thicket. Back in here, you can see the beech nut trees with the leaves. That's where the bedding spot is we're going to. Notice how the buck picks the density, the highest stem count, the densest spot in the whole area. <sighs> So this is probably about 150 yards from our ambush setup point and uh, so that's north so this is a, a bed there's deer hair in there now um, and uh, you can see there's overhanging canopy for them really Look loves that this bed. rubbed right there yep there's a rub there we'll get to that in a second thing is why isn't there deer bedding here right now it's because it's not a sun bed got pine trees behind us here they're not going to get the south sun but once we get green up, this will be their deer hair there. I know they use it last fall. You got the buck rub in there. The bill was just mentioned. Matter of fact, there's one behind here too. So wait a minute. What you're telling me here is, is that deer will move around on your property according to where the sun shines? Absolutely. Temperature bedding. You got to read the book that Bill and Josh just wrote. <laughs> but wait a minute. What about if it's windy or something like that? They'll drop down over the edge and get out of the wind. Depends upon what terrain you have. That's why you need diverse bedding on your property. See how sharp this guy is? How quick he can answer them questions? <laughs> all right, we so, need to keep moving. We're really having fun. This is one of the bedding spots that more. goes by. And all these trees two have been more. hit. Classic biting behavior. You hear? He just stood up and just had fun with that probably every day he was here. Yep. So, you know, I'm going to take a guess because his back, what direction's that? North. He's going bad here with our ambush wind. I wonder how come that accidentally happened on purpose. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've got to watch our video time on this. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to shut it off, walk back to where we started with the grease board, and go to the north to the other bedding area and show you that and the food plot. So we'll be right back. So I want to take just a minute. I just got to stop. This year, we're gonna have just incredible regeneration in here. And uh, we've already got big bucks bedding in here. And we're on their main path right now, headed back out to the other spot. So this is one spot that the big buck is bedding when he has a north wind on warm days. Now we're gonna go to the other bed and see what we got over there. All right, so we're showing you how this designed area is developed and we just took you in this bedding area down here which is the big popple huge popple tree clear cut that we did and uh, here's where that bed that bed was Bill talked about with with north winds this is where he's gonna be looking south the wind over his shoulder it'll be a warm warm day bed uh, I got water on here that's why you doing this outside outside's a little bit tricky but what we're going to do next is we're going to go into this food plot show you this and then go to this hinge because a different kind of habitat development that I did here and I'm also there's another this this year I put in another quick what I call buck bedding area it's a combination hinge cut hinge cut clear cut combo bedding area for bucks I did right here so you're gonna see those these three things next all right all right we're heading towards the food plot This is clover. It's still dormant. It hasn't even started to grow yet with all this cold weather. The edge of this food plot is what's creating our pinch next to the ravine drop-off, which we haven't showed you yet. 
these animals are squeezed here, but the beauty of it is, is they don't realize it because they're not really squeezed. They're choosing to squeeze themselves, and we're allowing that to happen. But anyway, um, we're gonna go to the other bed, and then we're gonna point out the importance of why we put the stand between the two beds, and we're gonna catch this buck moving back and forth. He's gonna be doing one of three things. He'll either be running a scrape line, he'll be seeking, or he'll be scent checking his food plot and these beds for safety. And we're gonna take all that caution and we're gonna turn around and use it against him, just like I always do. And this buck's shot. He's as good as shot right now. All we gotta do, and he's gonna be shot the first or second time in, and he's gonna be shot by plan design. Okay, we're still here. So, so as you're designing your property, you really need to have a plan in, my, plan in mind. I put this food plot here for a reason three years ago. And you can see how it's come together in the two bedding spots. We're heading right now into the food plot, the dormant clover food plot right now. Yeah, we might even find an antler out here. We found one today. This clover, yeah. This clover's trying to glow, grow. I found a one point. <laughs> we found a spike. Not my biggest buck, that's for sure. Not yet. Both of these bedding spots are roughly 150 yards from the food plot. So they're roughly 300 yards apart. Here we're entering this hinge cut bedding area. This is about three years old. I add on it. I've got videos in the member area covering this as well. You can tell three years after I hinge these trees are still alive. They're providing horizontal safety and security, stumps to bed against, and browse all year because deer love maple trees. So let's keep going. Here is the other buck bedding spot where I know this buck is. I also, in my book, uh, I tell a story about how I walked by here and I had two mature bucks with velvet outside their ears, land of me. They were bedding right in here and I was able to see them as I was walking by. This is the bedding spot of one of those big bucks. This particular targeted bedding area is only about a quarter acre at the most, but it really, really holds bucks. So if you don't have these, and it's not just about going out and doing them anywhere, there has to be a plan, a strategic plan to make it work. This is the cold weather bed, and, and if you were to get down in here and you point upwards, they're gonna get almost all day sun right here. You can see there's no snow here. Right? So that's why this, when I made this spot, I cleared it facing south. Southwest winds, or north winds, over his shoulder, he can look south. There's also beds on the other side of this for south winds over the shoulder looking north. And matter of fact, we're gonna go right now, I'm gonna show you another different type of bedding area that I do. So we're still in that uh, uh, hinge cut bedding area that I did and I expanded this this winter. In this particular area, it didn't come out the way I wanted to. These trees, I got some hung up and from the safety reasons, I just left it. And this is the first I've been in here since. They blew down and it kind of messed up my hinge. Okay, it's no big deal. I still have horizontal cover. It may be close to the ground. Most of these trees are going to die. But I did make a bed spot right here. As you can see it's high, it's elevated. They can lay with their back against something. With a north wind, a buckle bed right there. Look how secure he is in here. He can go that way if anything comes from here. He can go that way if anything comes from here. This is what you're trying to do. But once again, I got to tell you, they got to be in the right spot. All right, this is Greg. We've been marching towards this other uh, specialized uh, bedding spot I do. I don't know, we may have lost some footage, so I'm gonna go over it again. So these are targeted uh, combination, clear cut, hinge cut spots. I can do these in a half hour, and they're targeted for holding bucks. And what I went over a moment ago, as you can see a field edge out here, is that with a southwest wind, which prevailing, the deer, the bucks can bed on the other side of this cover, 
and if anybody comes, a trespasser or a hunter, they're going to get up and go into the wind back into the interior of your property. This design is important when you're laying your property out so that your neighbors actually improve and enhance your hunting based on how they approach things. So, uh, so what basically, you look here, this is a great hinge tree, this chair, so I got, see these big white pines? I dropped three of those, then I hinged over these cherries, this maple, and all these are going to live. And this give horizontal cover, and I got bedding spots all over in here for the deer to go in and lay down and feel secure. So I'm going to walk over here real quick, and there's another one. You want to follow me, Bill? Yep. How open this wood is. Let me create a little diverse bedding spot. You can see how you go from this open area to this. There's another case, just three or four trees hinged over on top of a big white pine that we dropped. There's a field edge. These, this is now going to hold bucks for me. One of my philosophies in my book is to develop the property so you can hold bucks in all areas. The more you do that, the more bucks you're going to have, the more age class you're going to have, the more rubs you're going to have, the more scrapes you're going to have, the more buck sightings when you're hunting you're going to have. So what does it mean to shoot a buck by plan design rather than happenstance or luck? It means that you figure the animal out, his biology, his movements. You talk to hunters all the time and just by the words you know they don't know what they're talking about. They say, well I think he's bedded over here. We don't think he's bedded anywhere. We know where his two beds are. And we know that he's going to utilize both of those beds with a north wind. When that buck moves, he's going to move through here. Why? He's marked it. Look at this tree over here. We've already looked at it once. He's going back and forth right here, and there's five or six of them down through here. And I've got pictures of them on the website. They all have the same identical scratch pattern. If you know what you're doing, if you know how to look at scratch patterns, no, you can't pick a tree up and move it over and look at the tree next to it, but you can take a picture of every one of them and compare them. Deer hunting is science. Deer hunting is figuring out and then making all the right moves so that the buck doesn't know you're present. Now what we're going to do here is we've got a stand we're going to put right over here. This is a beautiful location because we have a ravine coming up the back side of it. Now if you want to walk over, we'll take a quick peek at the ravine. We're on a point here that resets back into the ravine. Now you see this ravine behind me, a good 40 foot down to that. Once again, with a north wind, we're going to be blowing right straight back up the gut of this thing. And now we've got our, what I talked about before, the apex with the uh, 90 degrees uh, and the 45 degrees. Okay, this buck is squeezed here because of this ravine. So he's taking an easy trail along the edge, and that trail connects the two bedding areas along the bank of the ravine. He's limited. We've got a dead spot here, and that's why we're going to blow that way. We also want to suck the deer into this. We want to pull him in here. That's why we got to blow this way or back off one of these ways because we want to pull him one way or another. Now, if I thought he was on this bed, I'd want a north wind to catch him scent checking the food plot as he goes on out to where he's going at night. Same if he comes off this bed to come to the food plot here. North wind, once again, he has the nose wind approach to come to the food plot, so we're letting him use his nose. We're letting him use his eyes. We're letting him use his ears. We're letting him have it all. We found one weak spot and it's right here. There's the ravine where it ends. That's where all those runs are. 
and his runway comes right down through here following the edge of this you can scent check that whole food plot out there and we got a great access climbing right up the hill walking the creek to get here come right up the hill leave no scent only going to be up 15 feet here by the way we like millennium stands that's what i'm going to be using okay so we know where he's betting we're not bothering his bed. We're not getting anywhere near him. We're coming in from downwind, which we can either come in from downwind or with the wind as long as you do it in a straight line. I cover that in some of my other videos. I'm not going to get into that right now. What I am going to get into the fact is, is that this spot is good morning or evening. Why? Because the tree told me so. He's going back and forth. That's just natural. A lot of the other big maple hits in here are hit on both sides as well but there are more evening hits than there are morning hits so if I believe he's going this way in the morning which is the way I believe he's going he could be going back that way because there's a lot of different diverse food sources all over the place it doesn't matter this is a pinch point and it's a really good one because it's not really a, a, a it's, they're not really pinched they're pinching themselves off because of the cover that's here. If you want to learn how to do this firsthand from me and from my master friends, come and visit us at our school, the Tactical Whitetail University. We're standing on the grounds right now. We have a beautiful place to teach you about deer hunting. We will teach you how to become a killing machine. No problem. This is Bill Vale from Pressure Deer Pro. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll come to our website, become a member, and uh, share in all the fun. We'd like to hear from you because guess what? I'm still learning. This is Bill Vale from Pressure Deer Pro. Have a great day. And this is Greg. It's been fun doing this video today. To be honest with you, when you get to be 60 years old, a day like this, putting stands up can be exhausting. But I'll tell you what, there's nothing I'd rather be doing than this. Take care, everybody. Amen.